Mm. Mm. YouTube still see it saying going live and we are live. Yeah. Hello and welcome to the fifth, 65th edition of this Q&A. It has been 65. Okay. Ooh, English is broken again. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is the 60, 65, 65th version of the Q&A. And welcome everyone. And today we are joined by Florian. Hello. And a special guest, Krille. Hello. And me. Hello. So, <laughs> so let's, uh, let's jump right into the news. Um, yes. I guess Florian can start. Sure. So um, there were a lot of things uh, going on with OpenStore lately. Um, the first thing we want to talk about is that uh, OpenStore is now capable of handling multiple architectures uh, for apps, meaning you can have apps uh, published as ARMH in ARMHF architecture or ARM64 or even for desktop in Intel architecture. And that's a great thing. So why is that actually? Um, Grilla, you own uh, a Sony Xperia, which is a 64-bit device. Yes, it's here. Um, why do you think that's a good thing that we can have now uh, multiple architectures for apps? So um, it's a good thing because um, the Sony Xperia X and some other phones like OnePlus 3, I guess, is um, yep. able to use ARM64, which seems to have a much better performance. Yes. And even this um, is a good reason to support this. Yeah. So thanks a lot to Brian of OpenStore, our never sleeping hero when it comes to deploying apps or publishing apps to our user base. Um, and um, it's also affecting uh, app maintainers. So uh, like, for example, myself or even Krilly for Fluffy Chat, myself for Teleports, we have now the ability to build uh, the app in both architectures, or even in all three, and then push them to the open store, and uh, they will magically land in the right architecture on your device. So that's for native apps. That's a very important thing. So if any app developers are listening and they want to uh, follow that path, um, yes, it should be, let's say, easy to do, uh, depending on how you build your app. Uh, either you build it just in two flavors or in, in both architectures manually, or like if you have the luxury of a GitLab CI, for example, like we do, then you can set up a job that uh, builds the, the app in the right in the right architecture. And uh, yeah, there's nothing to do on the device. It will detect the architecture automatically. Uh, it will install and so on and so on. So for the user base, it's a great thing because they don't need to do anything. Uh, mm -hmm. But the performance for sure will increase. And um, also, it's just a way to go. Because it's 2019. We are in 64-bit area now. Let's go there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that is a really good point, that this six, um, ARM64 is the, the future. And, and uh, if we want to, to follow um, newer devices that might not even have backwards compatibility, which is a possibility that happen, will happen, yeah. Um, this is already happening on the, the server market and when it, many of those single board computers don't even have 32 bit support. So, um, what yeah. about PinePhone? PinePhone will have that, uh, backwards compatibility, okay. uh, but it will run 64 bit by default. Here comes the point by default, it will be a shiny 64 bit device. And so does these shiny devices too. They also run 64 bit. Yeah, they might they might oh, pinch nice. in, in your finger when you put it in your pocket. So it's not kind of mobile device I want to have as a daily driver. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as a daily experimental platform, they are great. Yeah. And yep. also Raspberry, what's coming up with Raspberry Pi? Uh, we, we don't have it on our news, but as I got it, uh, the Raspberry 4 something, subversion, ABCD, whatever, uh, has no graphics enabled so, for the image, right? So... This is the newest one, the, the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, mm -hmm. And currently, we have some problems with um, rendering of tiled buffers. Um, 
What's that? Wayne will ask, what's that noise? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so say it simply, uh, it doesn't look good. Um, okay. <laughs> so the rendering is using the open source implementation of um, VC4, which is the, the graphical uh, GPU on this uh, board. Um, and we still have some problems with that because we are using a newer version of Mesa, which has some newer versions of the APIs, which Mirror doesn't currently implement. This is also the same problem on the Pine phone. Um, we have, we can't use tiled, but we, on this one, we have a workaround to, to use linear buffering instead of tiled buffering. Okay. Um, so, but TLDR in simple terms, um, on the four, it doesn't really work that well currently. You, you can boot it and everything, but it doesn't look good. Um, but on anything less like three, 3B and uh, 3A um, should be able to run it just fine. Yeah. So again, a call to all PinePhone owners. Uh, you are able to install Ubuntu Touch on your, um, not PinePhone, uh, Raspberry Pi owners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, both of them. Yeah. Raspberry Pi phone, yeah. Uh, you are able to use Ubuntu Touch on your Raspberry Pi 3 without any graphical issues. How about that? Yeah. Um, give us some feedback. Okay, next item for the open store. Now it gets really, really thrilling because it's just hot as coming out of the stove. Krille, what's the upcoming feature you can talk about today? So last weekend, um, we have made a hackathon in Germany, Düsseldorf, and um, we met up, to, we were six developers, and we tried to implement um, reviews for the open store. So user reviews for apps, so users are able to log in to the open store and um, write reviews for apps. And yeah, um, we did not get um, it completely done last weekend. We have uh, worked today. And now we are on the point that we can show something. Um, so you can see here, this is actually not the open store. It is the test open store instance, which we have used uh, for developing where it's only one app. And uh, you can see here that there is an app and there is um, um, a green and red um, ah, sign. below the apps. OK, yeah, below the, the icon. Yes. And um, we don't have a five star uh, rating system yet. We are using a five emoji rating system, which are oh, cool. thumbs up, thumbs down. Happy emoji, neutral emoji, and um, buggy emoji. And <laughs> okay. So you can choose one of those emojis to write a review. And um, you can even post a review, um, which is called a rating, if you don't um, want to write any text. If you want to write any text, you can see those reviews. Um, I have a lot of test reviews. I am looking for one, which, is, which looks good. Um, you can see them here and you can so the current approach is that we have um it like cards in a horizontal list where you can swipe horizontally um to find a way yeah, move to a little bit more of the camera now we can see it yeah move 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 yes ah there we Ooh, go nice very nice yeah 16 that... reviews already on that app wonderful yes and uh, all of them are from oh, johannes oh, or me oh, oh. <laughs> So on okay. the final version, um, yeah. every user will only be able to um, review um, every app only once, because it would be unfair if not. Mm. And app developers will not be able to review their, o um, their own app, of course. That's cool. So basically, what, you, what account do you need? Uh, you just create an account on the open store um, yes. for reviews. OK, cool. Um, is it on the web page as well? So will we see this uh, just on the phone now in Open Store in the app, or did you uh, talk with Brian to eventually have this on the website also? Um, the, uh, that's on the, on the roadmap. There are a lot of stuff. There are a lot of things on the roadmap, roadmap still, but um, we didn't get so far. We are happy that it is working now in the app uh, yet, mm. and. We didn't have an HTML5 expert on the last hackathon, so we said that we will go mobile first in this. That is nice. So yeah. um, is this um, 
publish anyway. Well, pushed, I mean, uh, the correct Git word uh, anywhere yet. We want to start a merge request later today. Um, Johannes and me are still working on it, even right now at the moment, um, to clean something up. And then we want to um, make the first uh, merge request with the uh, most basic feature for this. Oh, nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to that, actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that it would be cool because some people always ask about which app is the best app. OK, that's yeah. maybe not the thing really. There is no best app for uh, that suits everyone. But reviews give you an idea of what it's all about. And maybe some people that used it for a longer time can can tell, OK, how good it is. And you don't need to test everything yourself. Yeah, you can rely a little bit on the reviews of others. Hopefully, hopefully that nobody will spam it or abuse it. Uh, then we then we shut it off again. Yeah. So <laughs> people out there, remember my words. Uh, the reviews are not being to be abused. <laughs> or Brian comes with his banhammer. Yes, Brian banhammer <laughs> will will fall down. Yeah? <laughs> oh cool. good. Um, so you're probably awaiting a lot of good reviews about Fluffy Chat, right? So when it's finally there, that I hope so. Hundred uh, percent perfect reviews. Okay. Um, actually, uh, yeah. So, um, anything else we want to add for that for the moment? If not, then uh, you could also say two words about Fluffy Chat if you want to say anything about it while we have you here already. So um, Fluffy Chat is uh, one nice uh, news because um, since today it is also available for ARM64 and for AMD64 yes. and um, will now be published from the CI automatically. So everything that will be new will also be um, will be on um, all other architectures too. And we are still working on end-to-end -end encryption. You're not forgetting it, but uh, then um, the open store reviews came and we are want to finish this task first before we um, are, continue our work on end-to-end -end encryption. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So I cannot stand back and say, OK, Teleports is not yet in 64 bits, but the pipeline is already there. So you could manually install it, but it's not in the open store. Uh, it will be with the next release. And for Teleports, um, we're also working on sticker support now. And um, that would look something like that, for example. So um, you basically, um, I'm trying to uh, get it done right. It's, it's really hard to present things um, on on a mirrored thing. So you can scroll through the through the sticker pack. Send one then, in the supergroup. Yeah, send one in the supergroup. Um, which one should we take? So also on the side, uh, damn it, there you can switch the sticker pack. So for example, oh. I can go here. Um, to one that I probably didn't click on. There is a small bug with this still. So sometimes it just doesn't load the previews well. Oh, come on, boy. It's always like that. <laughs> I hate you. This is demo. Right? Yes, that's <laughs> bloody edge demo. So now we are completely, oh no, it was just slow because we don't have thumbnails yet. There is a small problem with the, um, with, tele with the TDLib behind it, uh, it needs to load all the stickers in uh, full resolution. Um, so it's just it's just bloody slow sometimes. OK, while I'm talking, while I'm trying to get this right, I'm just talking over the, the issue. Um, you, will, you will not be able to edit uh, the sticker packs or to uh, add new ones, but it you can do on your desktop. Um, but for example, I'm um, pressing here on that thingy. Oh. Here we are. So it's it's already working very well. And that will be in the next release. 64 bit will be in the next release. And what else? Who um, made the stickers? Um, that was Johnny, right? Yeah. And um, thanks, Johnny. Johnny or, or Jonathan or Humobach. I always mess them up. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Please give us some short names that you would like to have, uh, so we can both dis we can distinguish you both better. Um, actually, no. It was Tim, right? It was not the Johnnies. Not it was not Johnny and Johnny. So uh, Tim Superkrupp. Ah, nice. Ah, Tim yeah. Dev. Yeah. He has promised so, it uh, over a year ago that he will do this. Yes, yes. I remember this now. Also, yeah. 
So thanks to Tim. Yeah, um, that will be the next release. Everybody's hyped. That's good. Uh, yeah, that's for teleports. Good. So then we are hopping to the next topic in the list. <laughs> um, so everybody knows probably that we have this wonderful uh, uh, port uh, for the Sony Xperia X by Alfred. Um, unfortunately, he will not be able to continue this in the long run. So we are looking for a new maintainer for this device. So that's the device. And it would be great if somebody out there um, is able to continue uh, with this port, which has already gone so far and it's nearly finished. It's only missing a few um, features that would really make it good as a daily driver. But this is this can be handled, and probably the support from us and from the community could help mm -hmm. here. So it's not that you would need to be the super skilled, awesome person that uh, does it all by by himself. But uh, yeah, we need a maintainer. And um, so please ping us somewhere, either on on Telegram or in the forum. There's also a forum post in the porting sub uh, group of the forum called Help Us with the Sony Xperia X. If you want to go there and offer yourself as a maintainer, don't hesitate. Um, yeah. Um, we probably can also help if there, if you are not able to have a device or not able to buy one, we could organize that probably. So it should not be a blocker. Uh, yeah. Mm, anybody wants to add something for that? So one of the things that I, I also want to, to add to this is that um with maintainer we don't as florian said um it, this doesn't necessarily need to be one person either it can be yeah. multiple persons and and also for the most part um the updates and stuff uh coming from from the stable rc and devil channel will come automatically um the thing that that needs maintaining is keeping it um bug free um well regressions um, and also implementing new stuff um, or fixing already existing bugs. Mm. Um, and yeah, this doesn't need to be, be, as I said, one person. It can be a multiple person. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think after the initial uh, things that are still pending are fixed, it's also just, um, let's say, someone that who takes care about the device it's not a very time intense job after uh, after the, 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 these roadblocks are gone. It's then just something that you do um, once in a while if there is a new update coming or you notice something. You should use it yourself maybe as a daily driver. That would be good because then you will see the bugs coming uh, very early. You would be on the devil channel, for example, and so on and so on. So yeah, please help us with that. If somebody feels encouraged now, um, lots of love from the community. There are already uh, quite kind of quite a number of people using it now, and um, it's one of the devices you can still buy um, from factory, let's say, not as a used one, but you can buy it as a new one. So for us, it's really important that we can continue having that device brought to shape and uh, supported well, because uh, a lot of people put their hope in it and uh, are now let's say would be blocked in the future if there is no maintainer anymore for that and also um this is one of the the pilot devices for arm 64 yeah. um it was actually the first device that that got the arm 64 channel um updates uh through arm 64 through the dev uh, our normal uh, system image cycle um which is also probably going to continue now that ARM64 is growing and growing. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. Good, yeah. So, so I guess we can move on to the next topic. Um, so this is um, a little progress report on OTA12. Um, and as you all probably remember, OTA12 is our new Mir and Unity 8 big release. Um, but not only that, we have a lot of new new stuff that are coming in that's not related to those two. One of those examples are LED uh, LED charge indicators has landed thanks to William Yon. Um, this means that when you when your device is uh, running low on any, uh, on power, it will show one color 
uh, and when it's charging, um, it usually one color, and when it's fully charged, if it's one color. Um, this is especially cool since you can watch this, for example, uh, an example that I had used it already is um, when it's done charging at night, um, I don't need to open the device and get blasted with white light uh, in, in my eyes. I can just unplug it because I see the LED is green. Um, so, yeah. Other than that, we have been continuing on our quest with, um, with the RC blockers. Um, RC blockers are bugs that need to be fixed before the art RC cycle will begin again. Uh, some of the ones that has been closed um, have been related to to window management. A lot of window management uh, bugs have been been cleared out uh, thanks to Dalton. Um, we also have tests running a lot faster now on Unity 8, um, and Unity 8 overall is starting to shape up to be pretty good. Um, also, some work has been done to to make it better on desktop as well as mobile. Um, so this is one that comes along further where we are going to the full full convergence where you can run it on both desktop and mobile. Um, but for now, the focus has been on convergence on phones and tablets. So um, you can now be able to um, plug in your device to an external monitor, uh, the ones that support it, like the Nexus 5 and the Biku tablets and you will get convergence with the new unit 8. Um, and the experience, I would say, is, is overall better uh, with newer unit 8. Uh, as you know, I had the dash, uh, the drawer, I mean, instead of the the, the, the scope dash. Um, so yeah, a lot of fixes has gone in and a lot of progress is going uh, on OTA 12. And when I'm already rambling, I will go to over to a Wayland DeFi project um, that we have started to to bring in support for Wayland into our Edge channel. Um, so Edge channels is our staging channel where everything that's probably most likely broken will land into before it goes into Devil. Um, and the plan is to to bring in Wayland support there. Um, this is, of course, for the Pine Phone and desktop efforts, and also for the Raspberry Pi efforts uh, to be able to run everything using the Wayland protocol instead of the mere client, which is deprecated. This is also an effort because after Wayland, um, after Mir 1.6, uh, Mir client will be broken or removed. Um, that's still a little bit unknown. Um, but we hope to, to speed up that process of moving to Wayland um, and also be able to run apps natively without needing uh, to run to our X client for apps that actually support Wayland natively. So that was a lot of technical ramble by me. So I will uh, let it back to Florian. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, we always we are, we always like when you have technical ramblings because uh, we can learn a lot, and if we cannot learn a lot, then we're just still awesome to listen to. <laughs> Actually, before I will just take one question that yeah, came sure. up on on sure. uh, on live chat that's related. I don't understand what conversion speed. Okay, so conversions is um, is a mode in Unity Eight where um, you can connect. For example, this tablet to an HDMI out, and it becomes a full um, desktop environment on the um, second monitor. Um, and convergence really means um, in a TLDR, it means that the uh, the desktop environment can adapt to be both desktop, phone, and tablet with one source code. Um, so that's that's in TLDR what it really means. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the next thing is that we have new apps uh, in the open store. Um, and that, are, of course, awesome apps. So finally, Camera Scanner by Johnny is in the open store. It was not really 100% volunteering uh, voluntary by him. Yeah? So we convinced him to publish his Camera Scanner. Um, the Camera Scanner is an app like 
most of you might know from uh, from Android and from iOS, um, it's kind of document scanning thingy. So you take a picture of a, a sheet of paper with some text on it, um, and uh, it gets converted nicely into a PDF, right? Was it PDF? Or was it just some kind of image? Um, I have to try it, actually. So uh, if any one of you wanted always to already to scan something and um, get this done with your phone, that's a good way. Because myself, I still have a flatbed scanner at home, and it's bulky, and it's slow, and it's totally not awesome. But uh, with that app, probably um, the scanner can stay in the in the drawer for some time. Um, and also the fact that scanners never work. Yes, this always <laughs> it works for one page mostly. Yeah, and um, one page, just one page. <laughs> I have no automatic sheet feeder, and so it's really if you scan ten pages, it, you have a hard time. But it works better with Linux than with Windows. It's an original Windows Canon, a Canon scanner for Windows. But the guys uh, from Sane did an awesome job to implement it. So that was my technical rambling. If you have issues with scanners in Linux, try to get older scanners than newer ones, because the newer ones are not so well supported. But older ones are working like a charm, mostly. OK, what else do we have here? Subsonic client. What is Subsonic based on Oriel? I have no idea what that is about. Uh, let's open the page. A music streaming client for Subsonic, and it can be self-hosted. Um, OK. Uh, never heard about that, but it sounds awesome because then you might be able to stream your own music and not rely on uh, corporate things. A tiny, tiny RSS client uh, by Gregor and also the Subsonic client was by Gregor. Um, and some games. Sweeper Madness 2 by Lionel. I didn't even know there was Sweeper Madness 1. And again, Gregor, he's a great contributor at the moment. Uh, there are actually one, two, three, four, five, six games, which are just called Coil, Save the Forest, Sudoku. Oh, yes, we need a good Sudoku, of course. Huh? Mm -hmm. Old Steam, Chess, and Mahjong Ma. OK. Um, that reminds me of Project Sudoku. Uh, that were what wonderful times it has been. Yeah? Oh, yeah. You all the, the original people that uh, remember that. Yes, it was great. That has been two years now. Yeah. Oh, well. Time is running fast, and there's another Christmas approaching. We don't wear our Christmas hats today. Oh, oh. I forgot it. No. <laughs> well, actually, we have one before Christmas. So. Are we? we? No. 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 Oh, Christmas wow. is before. OK, it oh. doesn't matter. So we have to not forget to wish our guys uh, uh, Merry Christmas at the end. Okay, we're probably so gonna forget it. We we're probably gonna forget <laughs> it. <Yeah. laughs> oh boy! Um, half half an hour into the show, we are at the sponsors gate, and we want to thank all our sponsors, of course, as we do all the time. Um, and that are basically all the sponsors that are listed um, on our sponsors page. If you go to uweports.com/sponsors, you will have their a uh, smooth. Um, private internet access, uh, DigitalOcean, Packet.net, um, um, Gardner and Associates Consulting, Tixia, Talentplot, Netlify. Oh, wow, a few no names came up here mm -hmm. lately. And that's great. So we are getting good, um, uh, how to say, um, organiza organizational sponsors, not only private people here. And uh, then specifically, we want to thank our uh, sponsors and patrons um, that we always call by their, uh, that we always um, spell out. And um, Dalton is always doing a great job with that. So I tried again um, when Dalton is not here. Um, there is Georg Thoma, Darko Balke, Vorolf Sun, Laurentin Tillemann, Milan Iliev, Scott Marley, Renat Mirkalif, Morgan McMillan. Sergio Svechov and Yogesh Patare. Wow, that was oh. nearly perfect. <laughs> oh, good job. I think you did it. I think you did I it perfectly. I did it, yes. Oh, boy. So good. Then we come to the question block. But before that, if you want Florian to say your name oh, yes, perfect, perfectly, you can go to ubiports.com slash donate and Florian or Dalton will miss uh, mispronounce mis your name. Mispronounce your name, or if it's Florian's turn, he will pronounce it correctly. 
Yeah, it depends. Depends. Don't give me Chinese names, please, or Japanese stuff. That will be hard. Nah, you attack. It'll be fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah, let's go to the questions block. And there are a lot of questions this week again, which is great. Um, and we also have probably something from live chat. Um, we will try to answer if possible, but uh, we also have to answer our guys from the forum. You can put this question always into the forum um, a few days before the Q&A, which is every two weeks. So for the next Q&A, there would be a forum a post and you can add your questions there and we try to answer all of them as possible. Okay, there is one first small question that we can put here immediately um, from Simon Leferink. From which country are you guys? Oh, that's maybe hard to guess in some cases. So for me, it's Austria. I'm an Austrian guy. Um, well, only the people that are here, we would probably... Well, for Dalton, we can say Dalton. He is true American. I mean... He's American. He's American, huh? America. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'm from Norway, a little place in Europe <laughs> that's not part of the EU. Um, no. And we can also we can also mention John. He's from yes. the, the big old Germany. Yes. Um, and Krille, where are you from? I'm from Germany too. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. I I think um, based on our our stats, I think we have most users from Germany in the whole entire world. Um, well, not stats, based on the request to um, the Cloudflare. Uh, we have actually more requests there. And also we have five requests to North Korea, which is mm -hmm. from oh, North Korea. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Uh, okay, I, yeah. I assume those are just crawling bots, though, but yeah. I hope Ubuntu Touch will not uh, get uh, illegal there. <laughs> one day or well, maybe it will be legal yeah, maybe. <laughs> be... but okay let's move on to next questions uh, yes mario sounds like a robot not sure if it's intentional yes i do sound like a robot i'm replaced <laughs> by my human <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. i i tried to to put on my inner dolphin today that's why i probably sound a little bit <laughs> <laughs> in adult. <laughs> My in adult. That's it. Okay. Next question. How does Ubuntu Touch currently address accessibility concerns for visually impaired users? Um yeah. Um we need to be honest here. It's uh, not doing that job very well. Um yeah. Um there is all there's no way to switch color schemes to high contrast. And even if we would have it on a system settings, not the apps would not obey it. So the apps would not all be uh, following that. Um, but yeah, um, any thoughts on that? What we could do about it? Yeah, I was actually thinking about it because someone requested this feature for Fluffy Chat too. And um, the question is, um, should we do this system wide? This is probably the best approach. But I think this will be much harder when we have um, other non-QT apps too with uh, Wayland. And mm. yeah, I guess the best approach uh, at the moment to do uh, this for um, apps first and then yeah. look how we can um, combine some of this for system-wide stuff. For, for, for the cog. The cog. Mm. For the color switching part, um, this probably could be able to do with some shaders um, in Mirror, uh, some OpenGL shaders. Um, and also, it might also be possible to do, um, like, for example, have um, blue screen uh, and stuff like that also system-wide in the compositor in Mirror. Um, so it might actually be... Um, be actually possible to do it and that will also work on on all the apps and stuff like that um so yeah hmm it's just a little bit the discussion we had already about uh, system theming uh, dark mode uh, night mode and so on um i think it's not 100 percent clear um how we would deal with a thing that i mean if mario says share it it's kind of an overlay um 
but it still could happen that certain colors would would blend in, into each other or it would actually reduce the um the usability of the app if the app doesn't know that it's being filtered let's say yeah, well it's, a it's not it's not the overlay approach no? um with shaders um shaders in OpenGL is basically a small c program that that can flip uh colors hmm. uh so it basically can flip the colors on demand um i mean it's it would be something that would be um really nice to have of course and also it comes together with font size things that also people ask about how you can change the font size that's maybe even easier than the color thingy um and with the tweak tool you can already change the resolution or the the density of the display mm -hmm. so yeah um but to answer the original question there is um nothing that we can really offer here at the moment and um we need to we would need to go uh as some distance to get this done right um mm -hmm. yeah so if anybody's interested in this topic uh please form a user group and yeah start working on it <laughs> that would mm -hmm. be great yeah? so uh, any contributions welcome to that of course yeah, yeah. okay good Wanna take Take the next yeah, one. Next one. Lionel is asking what potential might the new kernel in the PinePhone provide? Improved Bluetooth. Oh yes. Disk encryption. Yes, why not? Image and video processing, new UI features. And um, I'm so excited that everything falls down on my side here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what uh, what new kernel what is the new kernel version in the in the PinePhone? Four dot something? So the PinePhone actually uses the upstream kernel um, right now. It uses uh, 5.4. Yeah, 5.4, okay, yeah, already there, of course, yeah, sorry. We are following pretty much mainline at that point. So every new uh, every new things that you have on, on desktop will, will be there, like improving Bluetooth and disk en encryption. Well, Bluetooth is a bit of a tricky one because it doesn't really care that much about a new kernel it really needs a new blue c mm -hmm. um which is the um the user line implementation of the protocol um and for this encryption this is this is pretty interesting um but i i i'm not sure if i i do think that can be already done on the older kernels that we have because they are androidified and android added this support already mm -hmm. Um, image and video processing. This is interesting because this will most likely use the the open source implementation uh, of the the image uh, decoding and encoding. So that will be cool. Mm. Uh, and also new e UI features. It's um, Wayland um, by default. Wayland. Wayland. That leads to the next question, actually. That's a nice segue, as Dalton would say. So Alan wants to know, how does the recent MIR 1.6 release affect the new MIR and Wayland? So the new uh, 1.6 actually is pretty interesting because it has the, uh, the nested MIR, uh, but using Wayland, uh, a nested compositor, which is when you have a system, a system-wide compositor running in root, and then you have a system uh, user compositor running in user, and they are connected together. Again, I'm going really technical here, um, but the thing with this um, is that the root has has access to everything, um, and also it have the ability to control the user session while the device is in suspend mode and stuff like that. So it handles all the, the wake up events and um, and timing events and all these from Repower D, which is our power daemon. Um, so this is really interesting because now we are able to use this on, on uh, the Pine phone. Uh, because earlier we couldn't do that because we didn't have mirror on mirror support, which is a mirror client support because of the newer Mesa and the removal of the mirror client there. So uh, with the new mirror, it actually is a lot simpler. And actually, um, I'm not sure if this is the placebo effect, um, but it feels faster, uh, especially on Android devices. This might just be the placebo effect, um, but I would like to believe it's faster. Um, 
but 1.6 won't come to Devil just yet. Um, that will be merged into Edge, uh, but currently we are using 1.2 in Devil, and that's the one that uh, will stay there um, and go to to stable once that's done. And 1.6 will come in a later one. Um, and as I said before, 1.6 will be the last me release as far as I understand that support me a client. So yeah. Good. So I will just jump straight into the next question. Then. Yes. So Pu VOQ asked, are there any plans to integrate UTT UT tweak tool <laughs> into the main system? Seems like a good advanced setting kind of addition. So <laughs> Dalton has written here, please say no. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he, he has a point. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, probably something that uh, people would, would ask themselves more often, why there is a tweak tool in the store that I have to install when all of this goodness could be already there. Well, the history of the tweak tool is that it was written out of the need for for more configuration options and for things that were actually missing in the original canonical image. And it was already there when canonical still was uh, maintaining Ubuntu Touch. So um, it was hard, obviously, for them to get these things onto their roadmap if they ever wanted. I don't know. But there are things like, for example, to delete uh, to delete the app cache, the cache for an app, or to delete the data for an app without uninstalling um, or changing the resolution. As I said before, you can uh, you can really tweak your device, as the name says. But ultimately, the idea would be that we integrate these features uh, one by one into the system, not by just adding it, um, not by just adding the app directly uh, as it is now, because. Um, it does, first of all, it needs uh, unconfined access to your device. It needs root access. Uh, that's something we should not have in that way. So if we are going to move features that are replacing the features of UD Tweak tool, um, then it's not going to happen uh, to integrate it fully as it is now. Yeah. Uh, rather, we want to do this uh, step by step and um, in, a, in a way that you can operate it like now in the system settings without having to have root access or write access to certain partitions. And so the tweak tool is really something that uses uh, features we do not want to, to have on uh, turned on, on on every device all the time, because it can be a security thing. Uh, you can you can harm your system with it, basically. So yeah. Right. So I think uh, you make a good point about read, write, and, and root. Um, so this is what UTT tool does it um, most of the times. For example, for uh, the scaling, uh, it has to edit a, a read-only file. Um, and for us to implement that in, in the system settings, we would invalidate our update method um, because it might cause inconsistency between updates and cause the deltas to, to fail. Although I don't think that will happen on just editing one file, um, but it shouldn't be something that the system setting does. So if we were to implement some of the future in system settings, they would have to to be able to be um, a, a user settings, not a, a root setting. Um, and also one of the things um, um, is that we want to 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 also have um, so the state of the root file system should be untouched by default if you don't want to mm -hmm. of course uh, to change it um but the system should be consistent on each devices to be able to keep the stability that we have um of course i have heard a lot that people say that they don't like their read only file system and that's fine um you can make it read write if you want to um but our goal with the bundle touch is that um you can rely on it to be stable. Um, and that's the main main focus, that it's reliable updates, reliable day-to-day um, -day use. And imagine sitting on a train doing an up upgrade uh, and something fails uh, and you need to call your mom or something. Um, 
that's not a situation that's that's really good for a phone. Some might want that if they are really want to hack on a phone. Um, but when you ultimately do, do software your device with, with apps or something like that, um, you will need a PC or a laptop or whatever to get it up and running again because you, you can't interface with it if it's broken. So that is the reason for our read-only file system. It's not because we don't like the Linux velocity. It's because we like stability. Yeah. Um, next question. Any plans for adding custom usage profiles like automatic disabling of background suspension of apps when plugged in, automatic enabling of Bluetooth devices when connected to an external screen, etc., etc.? Oh, what I really didn't know until a few days ago was that the background suspension is already not happening when you are plugged in, uh, when you are in desktop mode. And I think also when you are charging, um, I'm trying to get evidence on that. But um, for the desktop mode, of course, it makes sense because you are in desktop mode, so it should behave like a desktop PC, <laughs> and yep. um, it should be um, not uh, suspend anything that's not in focus because you have this window mode then, and the windows are more or less um, just overlapping a little bit, but the apps will run in parallel, right? That's the idea of desktop mode. Um, the other things, um, we were thinking that um, that's we can't give a global answer on, on custom usage profiles because it's a wide field and a lot of people would understand very different things when it comes to profiles, what it should have or what not. Um, it could be done um, for certain features more that are more concrete i don't know um the thing with the bluetooth devices i still not sure if i get it 100 percent. so it means when you plug in um your hdmi html hml adapter slim port <laughs> thank you then uh, it should also turn on bluetooth so that you can connect your uh, mouse and keyboard probably well that's something that might make sense um but um it's hard to uh to have a vision here of what what that can what that can mean for the for the whole system so there are no plans actually i would say um with the background suspension we will see uh, how this goes because now you can with the tweak tool actually um change it but as we said we might have better ideas there um and also one of the things that i i see here can be a fit for an external app uh, like on Android, uh, I'm not sure if anyone heard about the Tasker app, uh, which automates some of these profiles and sets whatever you need. Um, but the thing with, with these are they are complicated, um, and, and that's something we need to, to stay away. We need to make, if it's going to be integrated to the OS, it needs to be implemented in a simple way. Um, because having profile and setting up user-confined profiles and stuff like that might not be the easiest thing for people to understand. Um, and and that's something we need to, to be careful about, that we don't enable a future, at least not by default, enable a future that is hard to, to understand. Um, so this is also about the usability about the phone um, and also to be able to, to give this phone to whoever and they should understand how it, it works. That's mm. the... That's also one of our, our goals with, with not implementing too much. Um, this is something people always tell, why don't you implement that, implement that, implement that. Um, but the thing is, having a lot of future doesn't necessarily make the phone better. Um, mm. We need to pick the features that are easy to understand and to be able to implement in a good, effective way so it can be used in a good, effective way. Um, but of course, I'm not saying this, this is, is something that's not... Um, understandable, um, um, but it will be something that we will use. Probably needs to be an external app first, and then it can be implemented later on. Mm. Yeah. Good. OK, so let's uh, jump over to the next question. Will Zero Style Qt Quick 2 controls, I assume, uh, be the official endorsed app framework for the near future? So the answer for this is 
Vote yes or no. It depends what you are going to use it to. But for the most part, yes. Uh, so Qt Quick Control 2 is already used by, by Morph a lot and also by Teleports a lot. And I think Krilla, are you using Quick Controls too? Uh, not in Fluffy Jet, but in Deco 2, we have uh, used Qt Quick Controls 2 to um, improve the Qt Web Engine um, dialogues. Mm. And, mm, nice. Yeah. Yeah, basically on teleports it, it works well, except uh, when you are, have things like where uh, you the the original uh, UI toolkit was interfere interfacing with the system, like for the keyboard coming uh, up, uh, or you need it still for the content hub integration and some some stuffs that are really uh, having interfaces with other parts of Ubuntu Touch. So for simple apps, it's probably not an issue. Um, we had an issue with the with the uh, on on screen keyboard um, not getting uh, the place it needs. I think it was something like that, and we had to switch back to the UI toolkit version of the of the text box or something like this. So you can mix it. Um, that's uh, one thing. And the second thing is to to get in certain uh, areas to get the same style and behavior as we have it now in the existing Ubuntu UI toolkit. We would need to probably make um, derived classes, let's say, of some quick control uh, to controls um, to get them to the same look and feel as we have it now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think uh, the answer is, is, is probably later. Right now, you, you probably have to use a little bit of both if you're making a complex app. Yeah. But for simple apps, uh, it should work just fine. Yeah. But our goal is to move more and more to Qt Quick Controls 2. Also, it's generally faster. Um, that's also a, a, a thing we need to add, especially on ARM64, uh, since the Qt company has done a lot of improvements on making that really rock on 64 bit. Yeah. OK, next question. It's from Alex from uh, WLBI, Warum Linux Besser ist. Uh, quick shout out to him. <laughs> When will Nbox be ready for use as a daily driver? Ooh, yeah. Ooh. So that's one of these these nice hard questions to answer. <laughs> well, the answer to this is that we honestly don't know. Um, hmm. this, these are things with this kind of development, especially when it is such a complex piece of software as Nbox is. Um, Nbox does a million different things, and it does it in in a beautiful way, but um, in a hard way. <laughs> So <laughs> yes. this is um, this, this is the thing with Anbox is that you really don't know, um, especially what issues comes up and how to solve this issue because it has never been done before. Um, Anbox is really um, one tricky unicorn that has never been made before. Um, mm. So I think right now it 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 won't be anywhere near. I would say at least for a half year. It probably won't be daily driver ready. Um, yeah, at least because we need we need to get OTA out. Then we are going to work on location and Bluetooth and sensors. So we have a lot of other stuff that we want to complete before we start really pushing Anbox. Um, but one thing that that was the idea of it making the Anbox pro, uh, aka beta prototype, was to to hope that someone would come along and contribute to it. Um, hmm. But it is, as I said, a, such a complex piece of software and probably a little bit my fault for not writing documentation. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, soon TM is the TLDR. Yeah. A small related note, uh, we are going to push uh, some patches to the kernels for Fairphone, Nexus 5, and OnePlus One to include the features needed for Nbox. So for these three devices, it won't be necessary anymore to install the Nbox kernel after each yeah. update. So with the next OTA, hopefully we get it for all three of them, um, it sh their kernels should be Nbox ready. So one step less for installing. That's just not an answer to the question from Alex, but uh, it's something that I wanted to say. So a lot of people ask why we have to reinstall the kernels all the time. Okay. We got it. We can make these patches on the official kernels or on the on the normal kernels, let's say. So you could use it then without that hackish thing with flashing the kernel every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And uh, the reason was that the uh, Wi-Fi was broken next to Five. So that's another story. We don't go into details about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are already over time, so let's... Yes, uh, we have quick. three questions left. We will speed it up a little bit, so yep. read it. I will take, uh, yeah. we'll take the one for yep. our Leo, because I already answered this one before. It's about the Raspberry Pi 4 and what's the problem with it. Um, so, as I said before, it's because of the um, the mess, the mess are using tiling, um, but mere express linear uh, buffers. Um, so if you want to get a full story on that, um, skip back... Uh, Actually, skip back 40 minutes, I guess. Yeah, we explained in the beginning of the show. Um, yeah. And, uh, but it's it's a thing that could be solved. I think it's not uh, something that will be there forever. So Raspberry Pi 4 feature future is not that bad. Yeah. Next Thank one. You. Next one. Eug Eugini 83. Eugini. Maybe. Eugenie. <laughs> uh, will the OS support 4G? Um, it already supports 4G. Um, oh, yes. oh, yes. But I think the, the most important question is uh, voice over LTE. Um, so voice over LTE is, is, first of all, it's depending on the device. And currently, uh, well, until now, we haven't really had any devices supported. Uh, but OnePlus 3 and uh, the Sony Xperia X, I believe, support it. Um, so this might be something we we need to do. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it a little bit depends if providers will force this in the future. If they are coming with an approach that only uh, voice over LTE is supported anymore, then that would be a deadline for us that we have to think about it. Uh, on the other hand, I think uh, normal calls will be around for quite some time. And but the thing, thing also with, with voice over LTE is it's generally easier for us to implement because it goes over um, the, yeah. the the network instead of a no special... No real demon or... anymore and such stuff, yeah. Yeah, it could be. well, it will still be there, but it won't be as complex to implement yeah. or port, port too. But we need to implement it. Yeah. Okay, the last question. Last one. What's the next OTA release? Wait, sorry, not what. When's the next OTA release? Um, or do the release dates happen at random whenever they are ready? Mm, if random, could random flexible estimated dates be set on when release might happen? So basically, he is asking a diplomatic question. I know you guys are saying when it, it's ready, when it's ready, but please, when it's ready. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so this, this also comes back to what I said. Software, especially doing this kind of software, is unbelievably unpredictable. Yes. Um, so, unless you have 100 developers working on Android uh, to get it out, like Google does, um, they can make this pretty predictable because they have the resources to get it done. Um, but for us, uh, we really depend on... It also depends on how many contributions we get uh, that month. It depends on how uh, how many bugs both me, Dalton, and the team are stuck with it. Um, it depends how many roadblockers we hit. Depends how many pine phone news comes up. There is a lot of factors playing in that role. Yeah. Um, I think my uh, my camera is working. No, oh, I'm back. Hello. Hello, you're back. We can hear you all the time. The camera is not so important. Just speak. <laughs> okay. okay. So yeah, these are, but. TLDR, we, we honestly don't know. We try to follow our a six week schedule, um, but but this this with this this especially especially OTA 12, OTA 12 being, being especially, especially big, big, it will it be will delayed. be delayed. Um, yeah. It won't be released before Christmas, sadly. Um, yeah. But maybe an after Christmas gift. So maybe just also to mention that our how our pipeline works when we come from devil to the release candidate to the stable. All the things that we put already in devil we also need kind of release uh, at a certain point uh, because that's like a waterfall model so it's maybe not that suited for saying okay we can release every six months what we already have uh, because what has been merged is merged and needs to be bug free so if we have some bugs or things that we want to finish we need to finish them before we release so Releasing by time is sometimes possible for us, sometimes not. We already said we wanted to have six weeks to eight weeks release cycles for the OTAs, but now still it won't happen if we do big changes like uh, all the changes we did to Unity 8 and to Mir and to 
um, whatsoever. And there are a few bugs on the board. You can look at the board. Actually, that's something you can find on our GitHub organization. If you go to github.com slash reports, there is a project tab and there's a tracker for the OTA 12. And as long as there are critical bugs inside, we are not ready for release. <laughs> that's basically the thing I wanted to add. And by time when these bugs get shifted to the right columns, then the release is approaching. And then we will start uh, announcing we need testers for release uh, of the next OTA on the release channel, uh, on the release candidate channel. Yeah. And as soon as the testers are being uh, announced, um, it's normally up one to two weeks or so. Yeah. So yeah, it's random. <laughs> <laughs> it is. But uh, we are actually on exactly the one hour mark because yes, it was a little bit we were late. late. Um, so yeah, this has been a, a really nice Q and A, and thanks a lot, Krille, for joining us. Yes, thanks, thanks for, for getting me here, for for staying all time and not uh, fleeing in panic after <laughs> you said what you wanted to say. I hope you enjoyed it a little bit, um, and we will try to invite other people from the community now and then, especially if there are news that they can speak about. Mm -hmm. um, so um, there might be a small after show we could announce uh, here, because I think at least the one or two people could join. So um, we have this nice page where we can meet up to, what is it, 12 people or so after the Q&A. Yep. Um, Whereby.com, that's slash. like where and like by, slash U reports minus chat. Yep. And you will find us there for something that you want to ask us in private, not on the public live stream. I don't know, or just talk with us or just insult us a little bit. It's no problem. <laughs> yes, so, insult us. Nice. Then let's close number 65. And now, before we forget, that's the thing with Christmas now. Um, mm -hmm. We shall use us. I have forgotten. Yes, you have forgotten for, for sure. <laughs> yeah. but I, I'm not. I'm here to remember it. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, it was a terrific 2019. Um, and uh, well, we will be, be back before 2019. Yes, uh, we will be back. Uh, so we will have another New Year's wishes to you with the late last Q and A of the year 2019 in two weeks. Oh wow, 2020 coming up. 2020 is coming. It's an and insane word to say. 2020. Just, let's spoil it a little bit. 2020 will be the, the year for alternative operating systems. 2020 yes. will enable everything that we ever wanted to enable for us. Raise the great pine phone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and whatever hardware comes our way in 2020, there will be others probably. So Yes. Okay. okay. Let's hope for that. Um, and see you in two weeks. And, see you in um, two weeks. Bye. Have a nice Christmas. Bye. Christmas, Bye. Christmas, presents, Christmas. <laughs>